Hello everybody. Welcome to number one doctor channel. Today video is about congenital heart problems, which is part of our playlist called short medical notes, in which we will have short videos about important topic in medicine but please do not forget to like and share our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel number one doctor, and join our social media accounts in the links below each video. Our aim is to share the correct medical knowledge for all for free. Share and be shared. Today we will talk about congenital heart problems. When a child has expiratory wheezing, it suggests bronchoconstriction, i.e., asthma. Inspiratory wheezing is seen in tracheomalacia, where the tracheal rings collapse. But if the parents report that the child has some difficulty swallowing, as well as episodes of respiratory distress, with crowing respiration, strider, and hyperextension of the neck, the problem is vascular ring, a congenital anomaly in which the trachea and esophagus are encircled by abnormal blood vessels. Extrinsic compression is demonstrated by barium swallow and bronchoscopy. Surgery divides the smaller of the two aortic arches. Morphologic cardiac anomalies congenital or acquired are best diagnosed with an echocardiogram. Left to right shunts share the presence of a murmur, overloading of the pulmonary circulation, and long-term damage to the pulmonary vasculature. The volume and consequences of the shunt are different at different locations, as noted below. Atrial septal defect has very minor, low-pressure, low-volume shunt. Patients typically grow into late infancy before it is recognized. A faint pulmonary flow systolic murmur and fixed split second heart sound are characteristic. A history of frequent colds is elicited. Echocardiogram is diagnostic. Closure can be achieved surgically or by cardiac catheterization. Small, restrictive ventricular septal defects low in the muscular septum produce a heart murmur, but otherwise few symptoms. They are likely to close spontaneously within the first two or three years of life. Ventricular septal defects in the more typical location high in the membranous septum lead to trouble early on. Within the first few months there will be failure to thrive, a loud pansystolic murmur best heard at the left sternal border, and increased pulmonary vascular markings on chest X-ray. echocardiogram and surgical closure. Patent ductus arteriosus becomes symptomatic in the first few days of life. There are bounding peripheral pulses and a continuous, machinery-like, heart murmur. Echocardiogram is diagnostic. In premature infants who have not gone into congestive heart failure, closure can be achieved with endomethacin. Those who do not close, those who are already in failure, or full-term babies need surgical division or radiological embolization with metal coils. Right to left shunts share the presence of a murmur, diminished vascular markings in the lung, and cyanosis. Although five are always described all beginning with the letter T, three of them are rather rare and will not be reviewed one of them, truncus arteriosus, is fascinating because it is cyanotic but it kills by overloading the pulmonary circulation, like the non-cyanotic shunts do. The common ones follow. Tetralogy of fallow, although crippling, often allows children to grow up into infancy. It is also the most common cyanotic anomaly, and thus any exam question in which a five- or six-year-old is cyanotic is bound to be tetralogy. The children are small for their age, have a bluish hue in the lips and tips of their fingers, clubbing, and spells of cyanosis relieved by squatting. There is a systolic ejection murmur in the left third intercostal space, a small heart, diminished pulmonary vascular markings on chest X-ray, and EKG signs of right ventricular hypertrophy. Echocardiogram is diagnostic, surgical repair is done. Transposition of the great vessels leads to severe trouble early on. The kids are kept alive by an atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, or patent ductus or a combination, but die very soon if not corrected. Suspect this diagnosis in a one or two day old child with cyanosis who is in deep trouble, and ask for echocardiogram. The technical details of the surgical correction are mind-boggling, and you do not have to know them. Thanks for watching our video and hope to see you again in next videos. Do not forget to see other videos in our channel. With my best wishes.